step forward to Jesus in repentance. How shall a man be just with God? How shall a sinner be made righteous? It is only through Christ that we can be brought into harmony with God, with holiness. But how are we to come to Christ? Many are asking the same question as did the multitude on the day of Pentecost when, convicted of sin, they cried out, What shall we do? The first word of Peter's answer was, Repent. At another time, shortly after, he said, Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Repentance includes sorrow for sin and a turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness. Until we turn away from it in heart, there will be no real change in the life. There are many who fail to understand the true nature of repentance. Multitudes sorrow that they have sinned and even make an outward reformation because they fear that their wrongdoing will bring suffering upon themselves. But this is not repentance in the Bible sense. They lament the suffering rather than the sin. When the heart yields to the influence of the Spirit of God, the conscience will be quickened and the sinner will discern something of the depth and sacredness of God's holy law, the foundation of his government in heaven and on earth. The light which lights every man that comes into the world illumines the secret chambers of the soul and the hidden things of darkness are made manifest. Conviction takes hold upon the mind and heart. The sinner has a sense of the righteousness of Jehovah and feels the terror of appearing in his own guilt and uncleanliness before the searcher of hearts. He sees the love of God, the beauty of holiness, the joy of purity. He longs to be cleansed, to be restored to communion with heaven. The prayer of David after his fall illustrates the nature of the true sorrow for sin. His repentance was sincere and deep. There was no effort to palliate his guilt, no desire to escape the judgment threatened inspired his prayer. David saw the enormity of his transgression. He saw the defilement of his soul and he loathed his sin. It was not for pardon only that he prayed. But for purity of heart, he longed for the joy of holiness to be restored to harmony and communion. Just here is a point on which many may err, and hence they fail of receiving the help that Christ desires to give them. They think that they cannot come to Christ unless they first repent, and that repentance prepares for the forgiveness of their sins. The Bible does not teach that the sinner must repent before he can heed the invitation of Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, said Jesus. This is the virtue that goes forth from Christ, that leads to genuine repentance. You who in heart long for something better than this world can give, recognise this longing as the voice of God in your soul. Ask him to give you repentance, to reveal Christ to you in his infinite love, in his perfect purity. In the Saviour's life, the principles of God's law, love to God and love to man, were perfectly exemplified. The poor publican who prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, regarded himself as a very wicked man, and others looked upon him in the same light. But he felt his need, and with his burden of guilt and shame he came before God, asking for his mercy. His heart was open for the Spirit of God to do its gracious work and set him free from the power of sin. 
If you see your sinfulness, do not wait to make yourself better. How many there are who think that they are not good enough to come to Christ? Do you expect to become better through your own efforts? Can an Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may you also do good which are accustomed to doing evil. There is help for us only in God. But let no one deceive themselves with the thought that God, in his great love and mercy, will yet save even the rejecters of his grace. It is when we most fully comprehend the love of God that we best realise the sinfulness of sin. When we see the length of the chain that was let down for us, when we understand something of the infinite sacrifice that Christ has made, in our behalf, the heart is melted with tenderness and contrition. Wonderful love!